Hey guys, JT Tran here. Now, Heather, let's talk about something that you might be familiar with, which is long distance relationships, or more specifically, sort of like that transition from online dating to long distance. Now, this is something I can't really speak of. Uh, I don't really do the online and long distance relationship. What can you say, what would you advise guys that are considering an LDR with some girl that's across the country or God forbid, like in a completely different continent? Well, I do have more experience with across the country sort of relationships. I did used to live in Utah, I know you know that. Yeah. Um, and most of the guys I'd be dating lived in California. And so that's not really a huge distance, not like different time zones too much. But um, I think it depends on your definition of a long distance relationship. If you are looking for something more serious, that's what I have more experience with. Mm -hmm. And. One thing I get asked a lot is, do they work, you know? And I think that is your definition, it depends on your definition of what it means to work. If you are looking for somebody like, okay, I love this girl, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with her, um, hope it's not so early on in that relationship, but um, have a move-in date. You have to just have a move-in date where she's going to come and live with you or you're going to come and live with her or you're going to meet somewhere and move in together. I don't know. You've got to be able to move Interesting. In Having a pre-planned move-in date. Like, so you're up to the point where things are really serious online, mm -hmm. right? And you're just like, okay, we're going to plan a way to meet each other. Um, but before we get to that, like, like the, how, how does one get to planning that move-in date? I mean, if all you've done is like talk online and you talk on the phone, like how do you do like phone sex or what do you do like to get to that point because you want to feel that connection, but there's obviously a limit to what you can um, accomplish just through the internet and on the phone. Of course. Well, um, some people are super clingy and need to be on the phone all the time. Some people like their space. Um, so you do have to play by that. I do recommend talking on the phone often. Okay. You know, like once a week or twice a week. What would you say? Oh my god! For us, it would be daily. You know, it like, would be daily. I was the clingy one, right? <laughs> so it would be daily. We would. I mean, but this was really before we texted so much um, back in like what 2006. Yeah. So um, you know, you'd send random texts. You know, just hey, I, I'm at my friend's house. You know, just. Keep her involved with your life, because mm -hmm. um, there's nothing worse than questioning like, where, like, who else is he with? Is he seeing someone else? And okay. I'm just like, I don't know, side chick or something. Right. <laughs> so keep her involved. Make sure she knows that she doesn't have to feel um, any trust issues. With okay. You. Interesting. And then as far as. Um, okay, we're gonna plan a visit. We're gonna see each other. Do you have the capability to actually? house her for the two weeks that she's there okay. or the two weeks that you go visit her does she have that ability that's not often the case sometimes it is logistically tricky um, but do have the space available where you can see each other for right. some period of time I was I will ask this like at what point do you sort of like initialize the, the sexual nature, like even before you, you meet, do you phone sex? Do you, what do you call it? Uh, the internet sex. <laughs> Mormons don't do that. You don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, well, I will say that it is, I mean, it's much easier to feel comfortable with somebody online. You go into some very serious, very personal discussions from the very beginning, mm. um, within the first few conversations. So that will, as you progress to like just speaking on the phone versus talking on the computer, um, you do have more belonging for that person. It does start early on, and that's usually right after that is okay. We just got to meet, you know. We just right, have to meet. right. So now that you're you're planning it out, you're visiting her or she's visiting you, and you like I said dealing with the logistics. What happens? Worst case scenario. You see her, she sees you, because this just happened. Um, he met her, and she did not look like anything uh, he expected. And I think he like he he broke down depression and tried to kill himself. Oh no! <laughs> um, but let's assume it's not that bad. It could be that bad if you've never met a person. And again, one of the reasons why I'm not a big onliner. Um, worst case scenario, you meet, and it's just not. That spark isn't there that it was online. Like, what, did, what is your graceful exit strategy? Um, 
it's different for girls, right? I yeah. think girls are, they did a study where it's like, they did that, where this person, this girl was um, fat in real life, like obese in real life, mm -hmm. or the guy was obese in real life, and the girls were much nicer to the obese person versus the men, they were rude. And yeah. So I think girls are gonna, you know, okay, well, he's here, and I, I spent a lot of time with this, and I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, but if it's just not going to happen, like you're just, sorry, this isn't going to work, um, be honest. Yeah. Just be honest. It yeah. sparks aren't there. Now, <clears throat> typically like, one party will, will pay for the hotel, the, the, the flight, and it's probably going to be the guy. Is there any expectation, or a guy should, a guy expect like if it's no sparks that you guys go Dutch on it? Or like how, how does that work, like logistically? Um, I've never really been in that position to no, be honest because okay. I was always much younger. I didn't have the career. I didn't mm -hmm. have, I mean, I would be a college student, right? Right. So the guys would offer, you know, just here, I'll pay for it. Just come out, come see right. me. So, um, but when it became more of a relationship and more, you know, we are definitely together, um, I did offer, I'll pay for the flight, you pay for the lodging, or just, you know, right. I will put my share in. So. Okay. And so now that you, you know, let's say you got to the point, things are, are good, um, should a guy, you know, so she comes over staying at your house or maybe a hotel, should there be an expectation of sex? Um, especially, especially if, let, let's say, with or without um, phone sexing, right? Let's say, let's say with phone sex, should there be expectation like, okay, we meet, she seems cool. I think she thinks I'm cool. Let's go out for dinner. You know, should a guy expect, okay, sparks are flying. I should make my move. Um, well, they've done some studies, right? Mm -hmm. Online relationships that start online, they meet. I think they get into bed within the first like hour, within the first two hours. I, mean, <laughs> I have to look at this study. <laughs> All right. It's, I mean, it's there. Like that connection is usually there. Okay. I personally feel that it could be more rewarding to maybe not jump into it so quickly. Go okay. out, like, like make her wait. Like, okay. make her really want it. Because she already, she's already there. She already does want it. Mm -hmm. Make her want it a little bit more to the point where, you know, she's, you know, ripping your clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> You're the piece of me. <laughs> um, now, what about, though, let's say, and I, I've seen this before. I'm just, like, watching all these, like, freaking train wrecks and all these groups, right? It's like, oh, I have a girlfriend now, and, you know, it's like, it's horrible, right? They've never even met. They've never talked. I'm like, you're being catfished, son. And that's a completely different topic. Anyways, um, let's say all they've done is talk, and they're kind of, like, all lovey-dovey, but they haven't been, like, super sexual, right? Um, and they're meeting, like, should they get sexual? Because in my mind, if the woman doesn't invest on, the, on a physical basis, like, it's catfishy. Like, she is using you as a way to get a free trip. And then she's going to go hang out with friends and you barely see her. And here you, you paid for everything. I think that it maybe needs to be established that if, if you're attracted, that there, there is a romantic element to the relationship. Well... I think the best policy is honesty. That's mm -hmm. my policy, especially with someone that even though you've spoken to them maybe for months and yet you've never met them, you ha you are putting a lot of trust into this person, right. this person that they portray themselves to be. So to, I, while I do believe it's not necessarily correct to expect sex as like, you know, repayment for this trip out, right? right? You should kind of, I mean... There has to be sexual chemistry. Say, yeah, but she should be able to say, this is something I would like to do, or this is something I don't want to do, and to just have it all out on the table, so at least the expectations are out there. Or right. The, yeah, I, I would say, and you know, agree with me or not, I would say that your online presence or your talking, you should have sexualized it. Right. You, I mean, if you're into the guy, you'll you'll say how much she. The girl will say how much like she actually wants you. Like she mm -hmm. will make this, you know, evident. Right. So there will be indicators of interest yeah. that that's something that she wants. So okay. it will be there. It shouldn't be. Hidden. Yeah. So I would say definitely like a warning sign that you're being catfished or used, you know, for as a free trip is if it hasn't been sexualized and she's, you and her are making plans and you're going to fly her, you know, all the way from wherever it is, um, that's a warning sign to me that you're being used as for a free trip because she should be, you know, whatever you want to call it, romantic or sexual with you um, to show that she's invested into you as a man. 
Um, and so now you, you, you've been doing this for a while, so it's not only long distance, it's long term distance. Um, as you were saying, like the move in date, like how do you decide? Because when you're in another video, we talked about moving from casual to serious to monogamous, like that can take a while, and that's in real, in real life, in, yeah. in real people, you know, person to person. <laughs> What about online? Like, how do you plan that? Like, how, what's, what's the, the, the milestone where you say, okay, we should start working on a move-in date? Yeah, well, I think it sh this conversation shouldn't occur, you know, within the first year or maybe with even in the first two years. It does depend on the person, right? Um, but you do get to know that person so well through phone conversations because mm -hmm. you're talking a lot more than you would in person that they tend to speed up a bit. My first boyfriend and I, we did not have a move-in date. It just didn't work. But the second boyfriend and I, we did, and I moved in like a year and a half after we had started really Okay, so like minimum, uh, you even start thinking about it as like a year, like a minimum. Put it out there because you really are talking more, you really do get to know this person more. <laughs> Put out the idea of it. You don't say like, you know, I really need you out here. You have to come out here because whoever whoever's moving, they're giving up their life. Sure. So that's that's a huge investment. Yeah, and depending on where they are, for me, Utah to California, I wanted to be out here anyway. It worked. But I had a friend who had a distance, long distance relationship in California. Her boyfriend was in Australia. Wow. And so they were in a long distance relationship. They did meet online. Um, and she was going to have to give up her life here in California to move to a completely different country. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a huge like investment. Like yeah. you're giving up, you're like American, you're giving up your, your mother, right? <laughs> you're giving up hot dogs and freedom, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. America. Oh. So do you throw that conversation out there? Do you speak about it? Do you talk about it? Be open about it. But understand that whoever is moving, is giving up a lot. Right, right, interesting. So, you know, bare minimum a year, you know, things are going good, kind of put it out there and, and start to slowly plan for that. Um, <clears throat> so, obviously a lot of this long distance is predicated on open and constant communication, right? Online, emails, you know, phone, you're whispering sweet nothings or you're typing sweet nothings to one another. But what happens if the guy is like Fabi? He is like from Asia. English is not his first language. Mm -hmm. Obviously, talking on the phone is going to be difficult. Even typing, if he doesn't quite have a mastery of it yet. Like I have to say this again, not being someone that does online or long long distance. I would suspect like an Asian guy that's not Asian American, he's going to be at a disadvantage. Yeah, I mean, everyone's got varying levels of English comprehension and, you know, mm -hmm. um, to let that be a factor, though, in a potentially amazing relationship, I, I wouldn't let that stand in your way. I have a friend who actually met her now husband online and they started dating and he, oh my gosh, like 30% English. Like it was, wow. It was bad but she was just so into him just like okay you know i'm gonna make this work like she had the motivation to just roll with it what was his secret now i'm curious <laughs> well, i mean he was really good looking <laughs> <laughs> that helps me good looking <laughs> no, no but he also i mean they had common interests they were both um you know studying art they were both art school students and mm -hmm. he just was really really good at art too right. like um he had some creative endeavors so now he's sort of speaking to her not just through his words but through his works mm -hmm. and i think that as asians we tend to be very concerned oh we're going to be just, you know computer programmers or engineers or doctors there's more to you than just your job and you want to have a creative expression and that's kind of her way of projecting value on like okay he's an artist yeah, there's a way to relate to him on an emotional level even if i can't talk to him i guess that's a really good way is like if you can't talk like Talk emotionally then, mm -hmm. right? Um, all right, so let's talk about one of the most important things, both good and bad, which is trust and catfishing. Because you have to trust this person that they're real, they're being honest. And for those of you who don't know, catfishing is a phenomenon of someone um, creating a false persona and, and just 
kind of just reeling you in into this 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 illusion. And one of the most famous catfishers was um, the guy who was a football player. If I'm probably gonna mispronounce this, Manti Teo. It ended up being like he was dating this girl for years, and he was in love with her, and there was like voice and everything like that. It ended up being a guy on the other end, right? And he, the football player wasn't gay or anything like that. He was just completely fooled. So there is a pretty big risk factor, right? Because you're, you know, you haven't met her. All you see is her online profile and, and the text. And you know, you would think calling her on the phone, um, it would, you know, you'd hear her voice. Uh, but apparently, this guy hired an actress or something like that. And it was just crazy. So <laughs> let's talk about trust. Oh, God. <laughs> now that I've completely destroyed all your belief in that. <laughs> um, I can't say that that has ever happened to me, like anything like that, nor mm -hmm. would I ever do anything like that, but there are people out there, of course. Well, I mean, but sure, there's like the male version. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, like these guys that kind of make up stuff on their profile, right? Oh yeah, and you know, you can, you can spot the lie. It is kind of easy with yeah. these lies. Well, if you ask them for more detail, you know, when you they've actually done studies, so when you lie, you are less likely to come up with details. If something has actually happened to you, you can explain it in great detail what has actually happened. Right. So if you say that you can do all these things, well, you better know how to say it at least. Okay. So these are the things that girls are looking for, right? As as you kind of you know get to know one another, and she asks you, oh, so you say you're the prince of Saudi Arabia, <laughs> like how Saudi Arabia, <laughs> right? <laughs> or, or something like that, right? Um, what other other issues? about trust that you're looking for? Um, well, just if you're already in the relationship at that point, um, don't question everything she does or everything he does, I guess. It's very easy because you might be in completely different time zones mm -hmm. to be fearful that this person is uh, seeing another person and you're just on the side. Um, but to just choose to trust that person I think is very important. I was in a relationship where he was like, you know, I can't, be I can't believe anything you say because I'm not there, you know? And it's like, it didn't even matter what I did. It right. just, it wasn't enough. And then I've been in other relationships where it just really didn't matter what I did. Like, yeah. I think that's sort of like the cost of doing business. If you choose to have a long distance relationship, you choose to have an online dating, that that's something that you have to accept because you're not there. It's one thing if like you guys are in the same city and you see each other all the time, but if it's long distance, that's your choice. I mean, I'm not that falling in love is a choice, but that's something that you're doing and like you, that's the freedom that that circumstance and location forces on you. So you do have to build that trust. You can't get all like clingy and you can't be all like commanding her to do this and that. Uh, or to prove herself, because that's just going to drive her even further apart. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so trust is important, but you know you got to understand the situation. Watch out for catfishing because it is. I think not that there are any studies about it, but I suspect like Manti Teo, he's like Hawaiian Asian, right? I I suspect, and I see this all the time. I, I, I'm pretty sure Asians are at the top of the list when it comes to catfishing because I see this in all these AMXF groups where these girls that I would just consider low quality girls are looking for a serious boyfriend um, because we as Asians have this reputation for being you know well off family oriented serious about our women so they're like okay now that I'm like have four kids I gotta have a man to take care of me and pay for all my stuff so you know be aware of that we do have a reputation it's good and it's bad like some girls will specifically seek us out but sometimes it's not because our, of our qualities as men, but what we can do for them. Um, any last words about long distance relationships that you want to talk about? Um, you know, to each his own. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work for everybody. It's not going to work for the same person later on in life. It just really is sort of in the moment thing. If you do find that right person, they happen to live in a different state or country. Do what you can to make sure that you guys eventually end up in the same place if your ultimate goal is more serious. Um, but if it's just casual, then don't put so much pressure on it. Okay, cool. <laughs> so you guys know my thoughts on long distance relationships and just the online day. Not a big fan of it, but if you are, 
take what we have told you in this video right, and use it so that you can find and be with someone that really appreciates you and that loves you and that not you're being played or you have unrealistic expectations. Okay guys? So thanks for watching. Um, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Bye guys. Hey there, thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it. And make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back for that every Monday. Oh, and if that's not enough for you, remember that for the last 10 years, the ABCs of Attraction have been the finishing school for Asian gentlemen. So we've been teaching guys how to be better boyfriends, more confident, and better husbands. If you need that extra push, you can enroll in one of our classes. But until then, we'll see you every Monday. Bye.